comes as China released a document in which it called a blueprint for deepening in integration of Taiwan and mainland China. China's government considers Taiwan a part of its territory. Turning back to the Skywatch weather forecast, as expected, more storms and downpours slowing things down on this Wednesday evening. We can hear it above us, Greg. We certainly can, Amanda. <laughs> it's been coming down out there. Meteorologist Ryan Miranda is in the Weather Center tracking these storms, plus what it means after them, Ryan. Yeah, Greg, Amanda, we do have these downpours that are pushing through the mid-state right now. Some rumbles of thunder, heavy downpours. One cell right now that's moving through Macon and Bibb County. A few rumbles of thunder over Rutland, over towards Dry Branch. Another storm that's firing up just east of Jeffersonville and Wilkinson County a little farther south also have some heavy downpours a lot of lightning right now pushing out of Dooley County along 75 towards Cordial some rumbles of thunder over near Americas as well and a little bit farther over to the east a few more lightning strikes in Montgomery County Glenwood over into um, portions of Wheeler County and Shrutland County as well all getting some of these heavy downpours it's thanks to this cold front that's really turned stationary over top of us it's providing that after extra lifting mechanism for some of these storms to be firing up behind the front though temperatures to the north and west into the 80s. We're rain cooled 78 degrees here in Macon. So what to expect coming up tomorrow? We still will have a few isolated storms around, not a washout. I'll talk about though the impacts of Hurricane Lee that we could see, plus a refreshing change that'll be coming on the Skywatch weather 10 day forecast. Greg. Thank you, Ryan. And now is a great time to download that WGXA weather app. Just scan the QR code on your screen to download the app to your smartphone. Ryan is back shortly with your 10 day forecast. <laughs> Well, it's a common complaint, especially from political candidates. The federal government is simply too big. The latest to propose massive cuts is Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who has suggested eliminating hundreds of thousands of jobs, including getting rid of the FBI, the Department of Education and other agencies. Chief political correspondent Scott Thuman explains how these big ideas can even be bigger challenges. There's no arguing the federal government is a behemoth, the country's largest employer with about 2 million civilian personnel. But some presidential candidates want to dramatically change that. Mass layoffs are absolutely what I am bringing to the D.C. bureaucracy. Among them, Vivek Ramaswamy, who recently told us while on the campaign trail his designs for dismantling the IRS, Department of Education, and in this case, the FBI. 35,000 or so employees. 20,000 of them are in back office functions. They're going to have to go home and find honest work in the private sector. But 15,000 of them are agents on the front lines. We'll move some of them to the U.S. Marshals, which has been more effective in pursuing child sex trafficking rings, or to the DEA on the front lines of taking on the fentanyl epidemic. Axios reporting Ramaswamy wants to cut a million civilian jobs. He's not the only one ready to start slashing. I'll also shut down the Federal Department of Education. Though it's often easier said than done since Congress in many ways has a larger say in how government functions. President Trump vowed to cut the federal footprint but instead grew it almost 1% each year. For President Obama, it went up about a third of a percent. About 70% of that federal workforce is all about national security. I don't know how you get rid of a million federal employees and don't do unbelievably uh, serious damage to our safety as a nation. And it's also the case that when you cut federal employees, uh, you're also going to be just increasing the number of private contractors, and that's likely to increase costs and get you less um, good service. And Max Steyer says as critical events occur, government can grow due to emergencies like the formation of the Transportation Security Administration after 9-11. In other words, campaign promises can be very hard to keep. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman. The top Democrat in the Senate says tackling artificial intelligence is a one of a kind undertaking. That's why he got the top creators and critics of AI together under one roof for an inaugural bipartisan forum. The goal being to build a foundation for policy that can pass Congress. Madeline Rivera has the latest from Washington. The who's who of the tech industry, including Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, walking into what's being billed as the first meeting of its kind in Congress, a bipartisan forum aimed at tackling AI. Is AI going to kill us all, Mr. Musk? I hope not. Lawmakers are struggling with how to regulate a technology many of them acknowledge they barely understand. Wednesday's private meeting is meant to give them a leg up. This is about the seventh or eighth briefing I've had 
I need more. Uh, I've got to understand this. But several senators aren't happy that it's being held behind closed doors. Democrats and Republicans are worried the format is giving billionaires too much sway. There's a reason that they'll only agree to meet all of these people, these executives, behind closed doors. They don't want the public scrutiny. They should be answering these questions in public. Industry experts say transparency will be key as Congress tries to rein in AI. Do you think this should have been open to the public? Yes. Congress has held several public hearings on AI in the past. Event co-host Senator Mike Round says Wednesday's meeting, the first in a series of forums, is private to prevent any grandstanding by lawmakers. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. The U.S. government says Elon Musk should have to testify about his company, X Corp. The company owns X, formerly known as Twitter. The Federal Trade Commission has been investigating data security lapse accusations and the company's mass layoffs. X Corp asked for a court order that would prevent Musk from having to testify about the company. But the government says Musk has firsthand knowledge of the issues being investigated, like his decision to lay off employees. There are a few statements by President Biden in the 2020 uh, year that the House Republicans are honing in on as they pursue an impeachment inquiry. Biden previously said his son Hunter never made money from China and that he had not met one of Hunter's Ukrainian business associates while he was vice president, except maybe for a brief hello. Sworn testimony by Hunter and his business partner undermined both those statements and Republicans, they're zeroing in on that. Those things have been proven wrong because of the Republican majority in our investigation. Now that inquiry could face political backlash if it doesn't find anything other than Biden making false or misleading statements while campaigning for president. Biden denies any wrongdoing and Democrats deny that Republicans have any evidence of a crime. Meanwhile, Republican lawmaker George Santos says he is not in talks with the Department of Justice about a plea deal. Santos is facing 13 felonies, including money laundering and fraud. He's accused of lying on documents and fabricating parts of his life story. Prosecutors reportedly wrote in recent filing that they are talking with Santos about potential paths forward in the case. But the congressman is pretty tight-lipped about the issue. To even get into the weeds of it would cheapen also, again, my ability to defend myself. But I can't say one thing to you. Why don't you go ask the DOJ what they meant by the letter? The letter was submitted by them, not by my counsel. Santos has denied any wrongdoing and says he will not resign if a House Ethics Committee investigation finds he violated rules. Fulton District Attorney Fonnie Willis is again pushing a judge to allow a single trial for the 19 charged with interfering with the state's 2020 election. Willis made her arguments to the judge yesterday to start that trial on October 19th, a little over a month, a little over a month from now. A decision is expected soon, but the judge has already expressed heavy skepticism of holding one joint trial. Some of those charged have requested Amanda a speedy trial, while others, like former President Trump, want to drag things out. All 19 defendants have pleaded not guilty. The intense manhunt in Pennsylvania for convicted murderer Danilo Calvacante has come to an end. Authorities announced the capture of the escaped inmate early this morning after the almost two week long search. Lillian Wu has those details. After evading police for two weeks, escaped inmate and convicted murderer Danilo Calvacante is now in custody. Police saying thermal technology helped them pinpoint his location. Shortly after 8 a.m., tactical teams converged on the area where the uh, heat source was. They were able to move in very quietly. They had the element of surprise. Cavalcante seen being loaded into a bearcat after his capture. Authorities cutting off his clothing before making their way to a state facility in Avondale, Pennsylvania. The dog sub subdued him. He continued to resist but was uh, forcibly taken into custody. Cavalcante made his escape from the Chester County Prison on August 31st after being handed a life sentence for the brutal stabbing death of his girlfriend. Surveillance video catching him scaling a wall before jumping from the roof. During his time on the run, Cavalcante was captured on multiple surveillance cameras, including several times at a botanical garden just a few miles from the prison. The search escalating Monday night after Cavalcante broke into a private residence 
and stole a 22 caliber rifle. He was ultimately captured near that home. The homeowner saying his family is now breathing a huge sigh of relief. We are so excited. My daughter actually was the one who saw it first, and it, it was, we were just celebrating seeing it on the, on the TV. So very happy. You know, we, we've had nightmares every night. Chester County Prison is under heavy scrutiny as Cavalcante's escape was the second from the facility within the past few months. Lillian Wu, Fox News. Five former Memphis police officers now facing a federal indictment in the deadly beating of Tyree Nichols. They're charged with deprivation of rights and conspiracy to witness tampering. 29 year old Nichols was violently beaten by officers during a traffic stop in January. He died three days later in the hospital from his injuries. The DOJ says there's a standard of conduct police must meet when interacting with the public. A right to be free from unreasonable force. A right to have other officers intervene to stop the unlawful assault and a right when in police custody to have urgent medical needs appropriately addressed. The Nichols family has filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against the city and first responders. The former officers are also facing state charges to which they have pleaded not guilty. Civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump calling Tuesday a monumental day for justice. These police officers brutally killed Tyree Nichols and it was unjustified, it was unnecessary, and it was unconstitutional. Crump praised the Justice Department and federal jurors for upholding their civic duties. He's hopeful that with these charges, there will be renewed hope for equal justice for all. After the break, one medicine you use to fight a cough could be doing nothing for you. Coming up, the latest on the moot medicine that might be in your cabinet. Well, as the nation gets ready to enter flu season, an FDA advisory panel issues a new recommendation on a popular cold medicine. Tonight, Garrett Tinney has that story. Wild because I take cold medicine all the time and when I get sick and it really helps me get better. According to the FDA, it actually may not be doing anything. An FDA advisory panel ruling Tuesday the popular over-the-counter decongestion phenylephrine is no better than a dummy pill. The drug is the key ingredient in dozens of cold and allergy medications, but recent scientific studies show it's actually ineffective in tablet form. Why did it take all these years if it's not working? You know, it seems kind of crazy, huh? Researchers with the University of Florida originally petitioned the FDA to take the drug off shelves in 2007 based on similar findings. The FDA, however, allowed its sale to continue pending additional research. When they have studied it, they found that when you take a pill of 10 milligrams or more, it doesn't get up to your nose. It doesn't get there because it goes out in the liver or in the gut. The FDA will now decide if medications with PE should be taken off store shelves, which account for more than a billion dollars last year in sales for oral decongestion drug makers. So, Did you feel like it helped you feel less congested? Well, you know, who knows? <laughs> News of the ruling has many asking, what should you take if you have the sniffles? 
If you do need to relieve congestion, there is another option. Pseudofedrin, more commonly known as Sudafed, which is available behind the counter. That has actually been shown to decrease uh, congestion in, in individuals. It's important to note this FDA recommendation does not apply to PE-based nasal sprays and drops. In Chicago, I'm Garrett Tenney, Fox News. A warning for those who have a desk job or who sit for extended periods of time. Research shows people who sit 10 hours or more per day could be at a higher risk of developing dementia. The team from the University of Southern California and the University of Arizona asked 49,000 participants age 60 and above to wear devices on their wrists to track movement. After six years of follow up, that research team found prolonged lack of movement was linked to an increased risk of the brain condition. To date, dementia affects an estimated 5.8 million American adults with one nationwide study showing Americans on average spend 9.5 hours sedentary. While more research is needed to determine if physical activity can reduce the risk of dementia, the study did find that inactivity lasting less than 10 hours was not associated with a higher risk. Despite some of the storms out there tonight, it could be a bit of an eventful Wednesday evening as the International Space Station is going to be making a pass over us tonight. So what you're going to want to do is go outside at about 854 or so. Get out the compass app on your phone and look to the west southwest. You should see a small blinking light moving pretty fast across the sky. It's only visible for about six minutes. Hopefully some of these storms will be able to clear out with the clouds so that we can see it, but your view may be obstructed as we get later into tonight. So let's go live out on our Wilson Bryant Heating and Air Skycast Network. Looking out to make in with our Wilson Bryant Heating and Air Skycast Network. We do have some of those clouds out there, the storms. It's raining currently over downtown. Temperature rain cooled though, 76 degrees. And here's that cell right now starting to push out of Bibb County Dry Branch right now in towards Twiggs County. Jeffersonville getting some downpours pushing into Wilkinson County. A little farther south getting up quite a bit of rumbles of thunder over into Crisp County. Cordial moving south towards Airby on 75, but still getting some rain showers out there a little bit farther north and still a few rumbles of thunder that's pushing over Uvalda and Lumber City portions of Wheeler and Montgomery County. So we will be having some of these storms out around for tonight, but they will be beginning to decrease the farther into the overnight hours we go. Satellite and radar though showing the front that's stalled out over top of us. That's providing that extra lift for some of the storms to be firing up, but it's slowly going to be pushing towards the south and east. So tomorrow we still have a few isolated storms around as that front continues to push out the high up to 87 degrees, but this high pressure shifts over to the further to the east towards the mid-Atlantic, giving us a cool, comfortable breeze out of the northeast. The high only 84. We could have a bit of a wedge set up on Friday, so I'm expecting a little bit more cloud cover, but most of us should be staying dry, but it's going to be feeling a lot better. The dew points will really be dropping with this high pressure filling in. Tomorrow, though, still feeling rather muggy. Friday a little bit better, but Saturday dew points dropping down into the low 60s. It's going to feel so comfortable. Sunday and Monday still feeling pretty comfortable, but we'll get more of that humidity back in the forecast. So here's Hurricane Lee right now. Category two storm. Really, it's going to be about these winds by Saturday, likely going to be having tropical storm force winds in portions of Massachusetts and Boston along the main coast and up towards Nova Scotia. The storm could really be providing also some high waves, some dangerous rip currents, though, also out across the entire eastern seaboard, even here along the Georgia and South Carolina coastline for some dangerous rip currents. Back here at home, though, in your 10 day forecast, a few scattered thunderstorms tomorrow up to about 87 degrees Friday. Looking pretty good, partly cloudy up to 84. Saturday, though, really going to be the pick of the next seven days. 84 degrees, comfortable humidity. If you have anything you want to do outside, Saturday is the day to do. It'll be feeling like a breath of fresh air. Sunday will be feeling just as nice, but another cold front will be pushing through, giving some more scattered thunderstorms with a high up to 84. And the next work week looking pretty nice. Bright sunshine on Monday, 86 degrees. Tuesday, the same bright sunshine up to 86. The humidity will begin to tick back up. And so do the temperatures next Wednesday. Seasonable sunny 87 degrees. So lastly, here's your Harrison's Body Shop Fishing Game Forecast peaks at 2.20 a.m and 2.20 p.m. Stick around, though. We'll be right back.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gary Thigpen, and I'm here again today at the Humane Society of Houston County. I'm joined again today by Dee. And today we have a little boy we're going to tell you about. His name is Killer. Look at there. He's a killer. You better watch out for him. Tell us about Killer, Dee. Uh, killer has a little buddy, Onion. Um, they were owner surrendered when their um, person could no longer take care of them. And he's a little, little bit... Uh, you got to warm up, let's just put it that way. But once he warms up to you, you are his best buddy for life. And he can go with Onion, but if he was separated, that would be good too. But he does not do, with, do well with any other animals except his buddy. Now, you notice you said you have to warm up to him, so that's why I'm not putting my hand over there anywhere near Killer. Because with a name like Killer, I don't dare do that. So, uh, uh, D, if someone would like to adopt Killer and also his buddy Onion, or either or both, how would they do that? You would go to the Humane Society at Houston County. Our application is on our website there, and also allow seven to ten days, business days, to process your application. All right, that's the Humane Society of Houston County. Let's go ahead and take care of that today. Let's find Killer a really good home. Thank you so much, D. Thank you.